Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I want to show you how you can take a boring blue hour photo and make it fantastic and dramatic using all the latest tools in Lightroom. My name is Serge Armini. I'm a French photographer from the amazing city of Paris, France, living in the United States. And I just came back from three and a half months of shooting of Paris and I have so many good tips to share with you. I try to do two, three videos per week. Anyway, let's get this party started. All right, so this is a photo that I shot from a brand new hotel in Paris called the So Hotel, S-O Hotel. If you get a chance to go to Paris, it's really cool because it's got a, a terrace where you have this view. And I went to shoot it at the blue hour and I was kind of like disappointed and I want to show you how we can make it really cool. So I'm going to apply something called the natural drama formula, which is covered in this book here, which you can get for free. You can get the physical copy of the book by just paying shipping and handling. The link is under this video and you can even get two weeks of me coaching you on your photo. Every info is in the link under the video. So what's this, what's this natural drama formula? And let me show you how this works. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a shadow to see what's going on. And uh, let me see if it's sharp. I shot this with a Sony 7R5, I believe. I shot this at, uh, yeah, 2470. I shot this, oh yeah, I had to shoot it by hand because it, where that's the only problem with that hotel. They don't, they don't want any tripod. I have a bit of glass here. I have like uh, the Notre Dame being renovated here. Not great. So the first thing I'm gonna do because I shot this at 800 ISO, you know what? I'm gonna right click on this photo and I'm gonna go to enhance. And Enhance is a new feature that came up a few weeks ago where they have this denoise feature and it's absolutely incredible because it does it on the roll level and it does a really, really good job. Yeah, look at that. It takes all the noise out. And what it does is that it creates a new row file where basically they took out all the noise. And because this was shot with the Sony at 800 ISO, because it's a bit of underexposed photo, I had no choice. You know, I had to be at 2.8. I had to be at 1 of a second at 800 ISO to get a blue hour by hand, but we're still gonna make it dramatic. So if you shoot by hand, just try to open your aperture as much as possible. Make sure, make sure that you have self timer on so you're not touching your camera. You know, you have like, you're at 130, 1 40 seconds, so it's slow, but not too slow. And then, you know, whatever ISO is gonna give you this photo. So this is the, this is without the noise and let's go. So step number one, we open a shadow and we bring down the highlights. That's gonna give it like a sort of a weird HDR look. And then I'm gonna uh, basically hold on the option key on my keyboard. I'm gonna crush the blacks. What you see here in blue and green are pixels which are 100% black. I do like to have blacks in my photo because when you have blacks, it just gives a good contrast. Right now it still looks bad, but as soon as I open the white, it's gonna look a little more interesting. And now the exposure is kind of better. You see, if I you press the best flash, you can see the before and after. I can kind of see what's going on. So this photo, I'm definitely gonna crop a lot. I think I wanna go 16 by nine. There's a lot of sky, the sky is not that great. So I'm going to go and basically crop this photo. I kind of like that street here, but you, you see, one thing you have to be very careful when you crop a photo is you don't want anything to be half in and half out. Like for example, you want to have something like this where this street, which is kind of nice, is half in and half out. So I want to have the full street there. I want to get much closer to the, to the I like that bridge here. It's very nice. Uh, I like that bridge here. I like that street there. I think I'm going to crop it that way. And then we'll do some magic in Photoshop to get rid of uh, what needs to get rid of. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is maybe add some contrast and lower a little bit. Oh well, no, maybe not. It's just the sky is way too bright. So, and the white balance is off. So step number one is the exposure, which is what we did. Step number two for this book, and you should really read the book. It's got lots of other examples, including like dramatic black and white and Saladam style. It's really cool. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to add, let's see here. The photo is very blue. There's a lot of blue. So I think I'm going to, one thing you should know about the white balance is that the difference between as shot, as shot is what Sony, I had this on AWB, automatic white balance. So as shot is basically the white balance decided by Sony. Auto is gonna be the white balance decided by Adobe Lightroom. The engineers don't always agree. I kind of like, uh, I actually kind of like what Adobe does on this one, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more magenta. Yeah, that's gonna make, 
the photo more. You know, we really want drama here, like real drama. Okay, next, I think what I'm gonna do on this one, I think I wanna crop it even more. I mean, I've got 16 million pixels to work with. I think I wanna focus a lot more on the Eiffel Tower. I'm gonna put the Eiffel Tower on the rule of third. Yeah, something like this, like so really more in Paris. Yeah, I like that more. So step number three is refining colors. So what can we do to refine colors? Well, not very much, but it's, it's a three-step process. You got the U, you got the saturation, you got the luminance. So U, what is U? U is the kind of color. If you change the U, you change the color, like you go from green to blue, that's changing the U. So how does it work? Well, you take that little tool here, and let's take this very magenta. If I go up, it becomes kind of greenish. If I go down, it becomes kind of red. Uh, maybe I'm gonna put it a slightly more red, okay? And then let's see here, this sort of gray here, what happens? Maybe I'm gonna put it a little more red. Yeah, I'm just basically clicking on the different colors moving up and down. Uh, maybe a little more blue here. Yeah, not you won't see a huge difference. Like, look at this, it just, look in the sky. The sky is slightly more pink, which I kind of like. And then saturation. Now saturation, I have no mercy for saturation. On this kind of photo, I always boost the warm colors, like the red, the orange, and the blue. That's all I do. Um, that's all I do on that. And then at this point, I'm gonna go to luminance. So saturation, a color can be more or less vivid. Okay, that's what saturation is. And luminance, a color can be more or less dark. Let me give you an example. If you click here and I click here on top on this color, I can make it go darker or brighter. But it does something weird here because it's mostly magenta. And you see, if you do it too much, you get what we call artifacts, which you don't wanna have. So if, if that happens, just don't use this. I might use it a little bit on the blue here. Let's see here, if I go the blue darker. Yeah, I'm gonna make my blue a little darker. Not a huge change, but U saturation and luminance is about refining colors. And again, you got, read the book, you will see a lot of other examples of refining colors. But we are not finished. Okay, that crane, you know, Notre Dame caught on fire and you know, this crane's been here for three years until next year is gonna go away. So we have a couple of sensor dress, but all of that will be in step number five, which is my last step. So now what I wanna do is step number four. So we did the exposure, we did the white balance, we did the refine the colors. Now step number four is cropping. If it's not already done, and that's already done, what we're gonna do now is the dodge and burn, and that's gonna change a lot of the photo. So first of all, I'm gonna put a gradient here for the very top of the photo. And uh, actually, you know what? On this one, I'm gonna use AI. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna select the sky, and it's gonna do its best to select the sky. And I think I wanna play around with some colors on the sky. Maybe make it more blue, make it more, ooh. I kind of like the blue thing. I kind of like the blue, and let's see, more green, more magenta, yes. And so I'm doing this on the sky. So that's one mask of the sky. Check it out. This only influences the sky. It just makes the sky a little more magenta. And now that I've done that and that uses AI, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go linear gradient and I'm gonna take the very top of the photo and I'm gonna darken the very top, but I'm gonna introduce back some blue in it. Okay? I'm gonna introduce back some blue and I'm kind of, I think I wanna do it one more time. So this is gonna make a gradient for the sky. And I think I wanna do one more for the very top of the, sometimes I do three gradient and that's called dodge and burning. Dodge and burning comes from the good old times where basically you had light that was projected, so the negative was projected uh, through a lens onto a positive paper. And the more you would project the light through the negative onto a positive paper, the more you would burn the paper. So how did, you, how did you do it to make it brighter in some places? You would dodge the light. You would take like a spoon, for example, and put it over the moon and the moon would be brighter because it would dodge the light. It would prevent the light from touching the paper, therefore making it brighter because it was not burning at that spot. So that's, but basically it makes making things darker or brighter. Check it out. Without all this mask, look at the sky. It's totally different. The sky is more red, more blue, darker. I think on this one, I want to add a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to take a brush on this one and I'm going to do some dodging. Dodging means making it brighter. So I'm going to take a big brush and on this one I'm going to do two things. I'm going to add a bit of exposure and I'm going to add a little bit of minus clarity. The minus clarity is going to make the, the highlights kind of glow. 
And that's kind of what I want. I want to make the city glow. This is Paris. This is a city of light. This is a city that never sleeps. Now, it's New York, but Paris also doesn't sleep much. And it doesn't seem like much, but look at the before and after. It just makes the whole city glow. Maybe let's make this one glow a little bit. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to do another one. So I do another brush on top of the brush. And uh, same thing here. Add a bit of minus clarity, a little bit of exposure, and boom. Okay. And then on, on the local adjustment, I find that the bottom of the photo is a little too blue. Um, I like to do things. Uh, so what I like to do also is you can take a big brush and we're gonna, we're gonna use a new feature that just came out where I'm basically gonna select, let me see, on this brush, I'm actually gonna put the flow and density all the way to 100. Oh, uh, yeah. And then I'm just gonna brush the bottom part of the photo like this. And, uh, and now I'm gonna go on this new feature, which is the brush, uh, the curve here. So check this out on the curve. So if I click and drag, it's gonna make the bottom, okay, it's gonna make slightly darker. And then I click here and I'm adding contrast only at the bottom of the photo, which I kind of like. But then I can go into the red here. And if I go up, it makes the bottom more red or less red. I think maybe slightly more red, but that's not really what I want. Let's go to the green and then it adds more green and this adds more magenta. I think, because the sky is very magenta, so I think I'm gonna add a little more green to just make a contrast with the sky even more. And then the blue, let's see what the blue is gonna give me. That's adding a lot of blue, that's taking a bit of blue out. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of blue out and, um, and check it out. I totally changed the color. I mean, it's very subtle, but I kind of changed the color of the bottom. Uh, let me maybe add a little more contrast to the bottom. So a little more of an S curve, not that much. Actually a little brighter here. You know, it's uh, this mask is only for the bottom. It just makes the CD glow a little more. Okay, and um, I wanna try something here on, on, on the Dodge and Burn. I wanna see, like my eyes goes here a lot because it's very bright. I think I wanna add a fourth, uh, a fourth mask here and maybe add a bit of blue just to yeah just to add yes that really makes a difference and you know what let's not be jealous let's do the other corner because when you have a lot of brightness on top it just attracts the eyes and i'm going to add a bit of blue there yes yeah, so that really vignettes the photo i want people to really go on the Seine river and go to notre dame and things like this now because this photo was a little you know not it's not as blurry it's 2.8 I'm gonna add a bit of texture and a little bit of clarity, which I usually don't do, but on this one, I'm gonna do just to make it pop a little bit. And then it's time to do some magic in Photoshop, which is the last step. But before we go to Photoshop, we have to uh, go to the, um, we have to add a little bit of sharpening. So my rule for sharpening is I always look at the sky. It's actually pretty clean. Although this was shot, I did 100 ISO. And uh, oh yeah, it's clean because I did a noise reduction. So no noise reduction on this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the sharpening around like 70 or 75, and then I'm gonna put the masking around 70 also. I'll show you why, because if you use the masking option, you can see here, uh, what you see here in black is not gonna get sharpened. So by putting the sharpening like around 80 or 90 and putting a good mask, you only have sharpening around what is not uh, being, uh, you know, just on the edges and not on the sky. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, yeah, there was a sensor that's there. Okay, I took care of that. Then I'm ready to go into Photoshop beta. So how does it work? You have to make sure that Photoshop beta is in memory. You have to launch it first. And if you do from Lightroom, edit Photoshop beta, you just launch Photoshop 2023, but it says, do you want to open Adobe Photoshop beta, which is already running? If not, please close. So boom, I'm gonna click on that. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna, oh, by the way, guys, before I, I go and do into Photoshop, please leave me a comment. Uh, even if you've never left me a comment before to tell me what you would like to learn, I'm trying to do three videos per week. Okay, cool. So here we are and let's do some magic. Let's do the new Photoshop beta magic, which is you take the lasso tool and I'm just gonna make a selection here. Uh, oh, I'm not on a lasso tool, that, sorry. Let's redo that again. And I'm just gonna quickly select this beautiful crane here and uh, 
I'm going to press shift and I'm going to select this also, which is kind of like the glass. And I'm going to press generated fill generate. And what that's going to do is that it's going to basically it's going to erase this. Uh, it's going to erase this using AI, which is really, really cool. Look at that. And it did a really good job. And you got three proposition. Oh my God. So good. Look at this. Two, three. You have to look here. It actually recreated the, the, the street. I think I like, I think I like number one, maybe number two better. It's kind of cool. Number two better. Now it's very clean. Now I want to add the moon here. I want to add if the moon, just a little moon here close to the Eiffel Tower because that's often where the moon is. So I'm just going to go generate fill moon generate. Doesn't always work. Sometimes it does really weird result because, uh, you know, it does. Okay. So that's my, it's, this one is too bright. Ooh, this one is kind of cool. I think I'm going to do. And if you don't like the three results, you can always click on generate and it's going to give you three more results. And, um, yeah, this looks a little too fake. It's too present. I want to see if it can do better. So let's look at, I think it was two and three. Let's look at four, five. Oh, five is not so bad. I'm going to take five and I'm going to lower the opacity of that. Uh, so it's more subtle. Yeah. So you have a little moon there, something like that. Why not? And then I, uh, one thing I always like to do sometimes is add some birds, but it doesn't often, it doesn't work. Let's see, uh, flock of birds generate you can add some birds and so if it doesn't work well what you can do is you can um you can you just you can go like for example on this website here called pixabay see that's the flock yeah that's kind of weird okay let's generate let's give another chance to the product but it's kind of weird i um i give you a little trick um if you go to uh pixabay i think let me show you well, let's see. Let's see what the AI did. Yeah, the AI. Eh, that's not so bad. The problem with the AI is that if I press Command T and try to make it smaller, it's not going to work because you see it did a perfect selection. So now nah, let's not do that. I'll show you just a, an easier trick. Uh, you go to the web to you go to pixabay.com. It's a complete free website and you write flocks of birds, for example, and uh, you're going to get a lot of flocks uh, like a lot, I like this one because it's on a PNG and you just can click on it and you can just download it, which is what I did. I already downloaded this one. And then what you do is you literally, I have it here. You can drag and drop the, the, the PNG. And because it's a PNG, uh, I can really, I can put this like this. I think there's too many birds. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to create a mask, uh, which is white. Remember, white reveal black conceal. So if you take a brush and, and you go with black as a foreground color, a hundred percent opacity, I'm just going to erase some of this bird. There's too much of the birds. This, they are too close to each other. This one, I'm going to put my brush like at 10%. I'm going to, because it's behind on the moon. So I'm going to make this one. You know what? I actually don't really like my moon. I'm going to take it out. I like the birds and the birds are a little too visible. So I'm just going to lower the opacity to blend them in. Like if they're far away, voila. But that is the final result. So if you press save, it's going to bring back the photo uh, in, in Lightroom. Uh, make sure you check out my book. I'll show you. So the original, original photo is, this is the original photo. So we went from this to this. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to keep the birds, but you get the concept. Try to use this tool to make your photography much better. Read my book. There's like a lot more examples and I'd love to see you on some coaching session. I'd love to see you work. All the information is under this video. I will see you in another video very soon. I'm trying to do three videos a week. So make sure you subscribe so you see the next one. I hope this one gives you value.